Let's look at this nice limit that I found on the math stack exchange. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of the n squared root of this ascending product. 1 to the 1 times 2 to the 2 times 3 to the 3 times 4 to the 4 ending at n to the n. And all of this is divided by the square root of n. Now this repeated product as well as your limiting variable in the base and the exponent both point us towards doing some sort of simplification procedure involving a logarithm. That'll turn, well, the exponent into a multiplier and the product into a sum. Okay, so let's do that. So we're gonna take the natural log of our limit, which is now gonna be the limit as n goes to infinity of, now let's apply the logarithm rules here. Keeping in mind that we can think of this as the limit as n goes to infinity of all of this stuff in the numerator, I'll just put that in parentheses like this, to the one over n squared paper, or power I should say, and then the denominator is n to the one half power. That's a little bit more obvious. Okay, so let's see. So this is gonna give us one over n squared, and then we'll have the sum as m goes from one up to n of m times the natural log of m. So that's from taking the logarithm of the numerator. So notice our exponent became a multiplier in two cases, both inside of the parentheses and outside of the parentheses, and then the product turned into a sum. And now what we'll do is subtract one half times the natural log of n to take into account that denominator there. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. And now we're gonna do a bit of a trick. Let's observe that we can take this natural log of m right here, and we can write it as the natural log of m over n times n. But then we can split that apart into the natural log of m over n plus the natural log of n. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna do for us. So we'll have our limit as n goes to infinity, and then we'll have one over n squared times the sum as m goes from one to n of, let's see, we have m times the natural log of m over n, and then, well, let's split this into two sums, and then let's see, plus one over n squared, and then we have the sum as m goes from one up to n of m times natural log of n. And then what do we have? Minus one half natural log of n. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. But now I'd like to do uh, maybe a bit of a simplification step or maybe a rewriting step that uh, pushes us towards our goal. So we've got this limit as n goes to infinity and then we'll have one over n times this sum as m goes from one to n of m over n times the natural log of m over n. And the reason to do that is to get some multiplier that looks like what's inside of the logarithm. So we can think about this sum here as being like in terms of m over n kind of. And then let's observe that this natural log of n is a constant with respect to the sum, so that means I can pull it out, leaving me with natural log of n over n squared times this sum as m goes from one up to n of m. And then we're subtracting a half natural log of n. Okay, so that's where we are now. And now I'd like to take this first bit and observe that we can rewrite it in the following way using um, these definitions here. So let's set, perhaps we'll set delta x equal to one over n, and then we'll set x sub m equal to m over n. But notice that's just the same thing as m times delta x. But now let's observe that that means that x sub zero is equal to zero, but that's less than x sub one, which is less than x sub two, all the way up, x sub n minus one is less than x sub n, 
and x sub n is equal to one. So that motivates us to rewrite this thing that I've underlined in peach towards some sort of integral representation. So let's see what we have here. So this is now gonna be the limit as n goes to infinity of, now we've got delta x, and then the sum as m goes from one up to n of x times the natural log of x sub m, and that should be an x sub m up front. And then after that, we have plus the natural log of n. And actually, I'm going to factor a natural log of n out of both of these terms and also take advantage of the fact that this thing that I am boxing in pink is in fact a triangular number. Notice that that's simply the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to n. And that has a well-known value of n times n plus 1 over 2. In other words, it has a well-known value of 1 half times n squared plus n. Okay, so we've got something like that. But actually, now that we're looking at it, there's a half built into both of these. So instead of factoring out a natural log of n, let's go ahead and factor out a natural log of n over 2. And then after doing that, what do we have? Well, we're going to have n squared over n squared, so let's write that down, and then plus n over n squared, and then let's see, a uh, minus 1, because we factored out this whole term here. But now let's observe that the n squared over n squared and the 1 will pretty clearly cancel. Okay, great. And then, well, let's maybe spread the limit over both of these terms. And that's allowable because both of these terms have, well, limits, finite limits, that is. Okay, so let's see. This spreading the limit over this first term pretty clearly turns that into the integral from 0 to 1 of x times natural log of x dx, given our setup that we have up here up top. And then after that, we're going to have plus a half times the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of n over n. That's what's left over after that simplification occurred. But now let's observe that that second limit is an indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity, which we can simplify via L'Hopital's rule. So taking the derivative of the denominator will give us the number 1. The derivative of the numerator gives us 1 over n. But looking at that, we see that this entire term here approaches 0 in the limit. So now we're just left with this integral to calculate. And we're actually going to calculate this with integration by parts, but I'd like to do a substitution first. Not that it really makes it easier, just, you know, to highlight this method. Okay, so let's do that here maybe. So let's maybe use t as our substituting variable. We'll have t is equal to natural log of x, but notice that that is equivalent to saying that x is equal to e to the t, meaning dx is e to the t dt. And then also, let's see, as x goes to 0 from above, we see that t will approach minus infinity. That's a well-known limit of a natural log. And if x is equal to 1, we see that t is equal to 0. So all of those calculations take care of, well, everything we need to change this integral entirely from like an x setup to a t setup. Okay, so we've got our integral from minus infinity up to 0. And now let's see, natural log of x is t. We've got e to the t from here and here, so that'll be an e to the 2t. So we have t times e to the 2t dt. So something like that. And now we'll use integration by parts to finish this off, but we'll use the so-called like di method as it really is a shortcut, a nice shortcut. Okay, so let's see that over here in this box. So the idea is you make uh, two columns, and on the left column you put your polynomial, or more generally the thing that gets simpler under differentiation, and then on the i column, the antiderivative column, you put, well, everything else really. Okay, so here we're going to put t and e to the 2t. Take derivatives down this column, so that ends pretty quickly. 
And then we'll take antiderivatives down this column, a half e to the 2t, and then a quarter e to the 2t. And then after that, we'll match on the diagonal and then alternate the signs. And that gives us, well, our antiderivative pretty quickly. So let's see, that's gonna be t over two times e to the two t, and then minus a quarter times e to the two t. We need to evaluate that from minus infinity to zero, keeping in mind that evaluation at minus infinity is really a limit. But in fact, if you take the limit as t goes to minus infinity for both of those terms, you will get zero. So really all we have is what we get from evaluating at zero, which is of course zero for this term and for the second term it'll be minus one quarter. So that means here we've got minus one quarter. But let's look way over here. We don't have our limit is equal to minus one quarter. We have the natural log of our limit is equal to minus one quarter. But that means in the end, the value of our limit is e to the minus one quarter. So there we have it. L is e to the minus one quarter. And that's a good place to stop.